once again, if you're here once again, for joining me on this video, for clicking on it, for your interest. If you're here for the first time, I hope that this video will be helpful to you. Perhaps you would consider subscribing. No need to hit the notification bell. I post daily for the time being. I also do request videos. One of those is being addressed today from Maria's Cute Pets. Her channel will be linked in the description below. Maria's Cute Pets asked, how do I know what PPM to give to which orchids? I have sat down and taken some notes because what I do, I do out of habit. But in order to break it down to something that is understandable and easily applicable for any collection, regardless of organic or inorganic growing or even bare root growing, I'm going to start with the lowest parts per million and work my way up to 300 parts per million with a few examples because 300 parts per million is the maximum that I fertilize my orchids simply because I feel orchids have such a slow metabolism. They don't need much, but when they do need it, 300 parts per million is plenty. That is my opinion. There are other opinions out there and I hope that these opinions will be reflected in the comments below because anybody watching and clicking on this video might like to go to the comments to see other options and other alternatives. I'm answering the question from Maria's Cute Pets based on what I do with my collection. So let's start with zero parts per million. We are in August. Fortunately, all my orchids are growing or they're doing something. They're either blooming, producing roots, starting new growths. It's all kicking off. So I cannot actually show you an example at the moment where I would do zero parts per million. But let me say that zero parts per million goes into an orchid that is doing none of the prior mentioned activities. Not growing roots, not growing a new growth, not blooming. Zero parts per million. And that is what I consider in my collection the rest phase of my orchid. I don't ever let my orchids go completely dry for a considerable amount of time. I live in southern Spain. My climate is a little bit different to any other homegrown, indoor growing, artificial lights growing. Because a lot of my orchids live outside for about 10 months of the year, if they're not doing anything in adverted commas, that is a rest phase. That is where I do not fertilize, but I will continue to water them. Less, but every day regardless. So zero parts per million is my definition of a rest because the orchid isn't actively growing, blooming, or producing roots. I then apply 100 parts per million for orchids that have a fine root system when they start a new growth or are actively growing. But this applies to a fine root system because there's other orchids with different size roots also starting a new growth and they get more, but I'll get to that. So just applied to 100 parts per million for orchids that have a fine root system when they start a new growth or actively growing roots after the growths have matured. Because not always does an orchid produce roots while the growth is growing. There's a different stage. It can happen when the growth matures, while the growth is growing, or at the start of the eye swelling. But as long as the orchid is doing something and it has fine roots, I apply 100 parts per million of fertilizer. Even if the orchid is not blooming, if it's not even growing a new growth, the roots need energy. The orchid is exuding energy to produce roots. So I put in 100 parts per million, even if it's just, just in inverted commas, root growth. I go to 160 parts per million for orchids with fine roots, but they grow very, very fast once they get going. That is where I up my parts per million to a little bit more based on the fact that once the orchid is at active growth, it is a much faster grower than let's say any other orchids in the category of a fine root system. I will get to examples at the end, but I just wanted to point that out. 160 parts per million when there's an active growth on an orchid that really rockets with its new growth faster than anything else on a fine root system. 160 parts per million is also the amount of parts per million I apply to my orchid in active growth during the winter. This is what I consider for me half the amount these orchids would get if they were in active growth during the summer. 
Some orchids don't slow down. They don't stop. They're doing something all year round, growing roots, growing new growths, blooming, starting with new growth, and then those growths mature throughout the winter. That is when I go to 160 parts per million because the orchid, despite doing something in my climate, and I am not in a controlled environment in my dining room, everything continues to grow, but much slower based on the temperature in my dining room. But it is that growth that I continue to encourage using the slower metabolism in the winter and reducing to 160 parts per million if that orchid is in active growth. And then I use 300 parts per million for all large orchids with thick fleshy roots when in active growth, be it in new growths or new roots, either way, it's 300 parts per million until such a time that that orchid would finish blooming. Or when it starts to bloom, after a period of zero parts per million rest, because some orchids will produce new growths, new roots, and then stop. And then nothing happens. There could even be a sheath in there, yet nothing happens. The roots are developed while the new growth was growing. And all this for a big orchid, that's where I put in 300 parts per million. When all that has stopped for a moment, while the orchid is regaining more energy to then fill the sheath or push buds, that is the part where I would then drop to zero parts per million, waiting for the orchid to kick into action again. But 300 parts per million for all orchids that are large with thick fleshy roots when in active growth. When I then see on these orchids buds pushing again, that is when I continue with my 300 parts per million after that zero parts per million rest period. Because I want my fertilizer, which has calcium in it, to sustain and support the energy required to be able to produce the buds and for the blooms to bloom out. I have a fertilizer that has calcium in it. I think it's best I put in a disclaimer right here. I am talking about regular fertilizer that we apply to our orchids. I am not talking about supplements. My playlist of my products explained has the supplement questions answered in separate videos. I think this is a good time when I talk about zero parts per million during a rest period for large orchids prior to them blooming out, that I make sure that I'm talking about a fertilizer that has calcium in it. I am not speaking of adding a supplement of a calcium nitrate as such. But the 300 parts per million goes back into the orchid when it starts to push buds, or I can see that the sheath is starting to get a little bit chubby. And for that reason, I then go straight in with 300 parts per million again, because my fertilizer has calcium in it. So I'm going to now pull some orchids, show you some examples based on the zero, the 100, the 160, the 300, and the zero parts per million in between the completion of a new growth and the start of pushing blooms in a sheath or buds. Tolumnias are fabulous as an example from zero to 100 parts per million. And I can say by experience, by having made the mistake, thinking that I was going to grow tolumnias to the size of Vandas, I over fertilized mine for some years, which was fine for the first couple of years because they were recovering, they were hungry. Once they established themselves, they frazzled because I applied too much fertilizer and the conditions for these tolumnias is they dry out very quickly, which means the water evaporates much, much quicker and there is no time to absorb excess nutrients in any form. So the water evaporates around the roots, leaving salts on them, causing burn and then the destruction of roots. So for a fine root system that has a quicker drying cycle, it is zero parts per million while the orchid isn't doing anything. That is usually in the winter. And then once the orchid comes into its own with regards to starting a new growth, a new fan, 100 parts per million ever so often with a lot, a lot of flushing in the case of a very quick drying cycle. But in general, we've got very, very fine roots on tolumnias. And in my case, they're on lava rock, but this is not a care video. This is basically why am I using 100 parts per million when? On tolumnias, when they come into active growth, as an example, the fine roots, I don't need to crank them up to 160 parts per million. Zero to 100 when in active growth, as the temperatures warm up, 100 parts per million all season long, 
zero throughout the winter, but I never deprive them of water. Just a little pretty bloom interlude. <laughs> this is Dendrobium tetragronum variety giganteum. Great, great orchid for the example of zero parts per million to 160 parts per million within a very short period of time and then back down to zero. Very happy to have this orchid, not only because I just love its growth habit, but also because this is perfect for this example regarding zero to 160 parts per million. This orchid is fine rooted. Trust me, very fine roots in the pot. You can hardly see them because yippee yay, yay they are in the pot. This orchid does nothing for most part of the year and that is why it gets zero parts per million for the most part of the year. And then suddenly a new growth will appear at the base. And then I know that this orchid has an attribute that is phenomenal and it grows a new growth within two weeks. This happens. I have a video on my Dendronium tetragonum from last year watching the daily development of its growth. It is super fast, but I have fine roots, but it still needs to have strength to be able to grow so fast a structure with such a short little base on the rhizome. Very, very skinny, skinny base. And that is why this orchid gets 160 parts per million of fertilizer straight away the minute I see a growth coming because I know this is a real rocket once it gets going. It does about three centimeters of growth per day or let's say per 24 hours. You can literally watch it happen. For me, for example, I can take my tie here and have a look in the evening and I know where it's at and the next day it surpassed that. Then again, the next growth gives me a margin and the next day it's up here. This is insanity for an orchid. So when it comes to an orchid that grows so quickly and has to mature so fast and become strong and stay upright, fine roots, 160 parts per million to support that rapid, rapid growth. After the growth has matured, it'll leaf out like its predecessor here. It'll leaf out and that'll be the end of the activity for this orchid for another four to five months until it starts to bloom. And in that period, I go back to zero parts per million. It's rest phase, in my opinion, zero parts per million, no fertilizer. There was one thing to also to know that this orchid, for example, grows roots at the same time as that growth is growing. So I can stop any form of fertilizer once this new growth has matured. So there we go, from zero to 160, back to zero until I see it pushing spikes in the apex then we go back up to 160. In the case of this orchid with fine roots because of its attributes. Then we have the zero to 300 parts per million example. In this case, I'm going to use my Rincolalia digbiana. This orchid, being a hot grower, I am always amazed at the fact that it is not growing any new growth during the hottest time of year for me. It starts in September and it grows throughout the winter. At this point in time, I'm giving it 300 parts per million because even though I don't have any new growths, the roots have been going nuts for the past three months. This pot is full again after her early spring cleanup. These roots need a lot of energy and I don't want them pulling it from the orchid and its storage organs. I want to give them the energy so that my orchid stays strong and doesn't start to decline because she is producing new roots for what's to come. So in this case, a mature growth will bloom and then immediately start pushing out new roots throughout the hottest months of the year. The new growths will follow. But because it doesn't look like she's doing anything new growth-wise doesn't mean that what's in the pot isn't relevant. So for me, that is straight away 300 parts per million the minute I see new growth starting. Her rest phase is after she blooms. And that's when she just gets flushed with zero parts per million of plain RO water in my case. That is her rest phase. She's finished blooming and then suddenly new roots will come. 
and prior to any new roots coming, she just gets zero parts per million. The minute the new roots come, 300 parts per million. So there is no in-between with this orchid until the winter. And that is when I go down to 160 parts per million because she is a classic example that the growths will start in September, the new growths for the next blooming, and I have to maintain those new growths, give them strength throughout the winter. However, the metabolism of this orchid slows down in my climate because it is too cool for her to grow lush, big growths fast. She will grow lush, big growths. They just take a little bit longer in my case, but there's no need for me to then give her 300 parts per million during the winter when her metabolism slows down. So I reduce that to 160 parts per million because she is able to absorb those nutrients at the pace that she is growing. I do not want any salt buildup in my pots over the winter. I do not want any salt buildup, period. But especially during the winter, I have to be very, very careful. So we have zero to 300 very, very quickly when the new roots start and then a drop to 160 parts per million as the temperatures drop, but she is growing new growths. My Catlia Dinard Blue Heaven, perfect example from zero parts per million to 300 parts per million, nonstop. Zero parts per million, this orchid's attributes, she rests. She doesn't do much over the winter. She's just there, chill. So zero parts per million. The moment I see an eye swelling at the base, 300 parts per million goes in because look at the structures that this orchid produces and she produces them relatively quickly. So I don't waste any time. The minute I see an eye swelling at the base, 300 parts per million, thick fleshy roots, a lot of energy is being exuded. Either way, this orchid 300 parts per million, there is no in between. And we are now at the stage that the growth has matured and she's growing new roots. Look at the size of those roots. Those roots need energy to, so that she doesn't take it away from the rest of the orchid because she's also got a stonking sheath to hold on to, even though it hasn't swollen yet. I am hoping to get a bloom out of her this year. Side note, I don't know if I will. I'm very late in the season this year with my growths. A very mild spring is to blame. Never mind. This structure here is giving me a gorgeous root system. So while she's doing that for the next couple of months until the temperatures drop at night, we have gone from zero parts per million straight into 300 parts per million, and then we'll drop again to zero parts per million there is no in-between with this orchid. It's go time. When she starts growing, it's go time. So when it comes to mounts and fast growing orchids, here's an example of a Dendrobium aphyllum. Very fine roots. We go back to fine roots, 100 parts per million when in active growth, zero parts per million when supposedly in rest. But she's a fast grower. So let's take the example of the Dendrobium tetragonum where I put in 160 parts per million because those growths grow super fast. Same with the aphyllum, but she's on a mount. So she has no reservoir to hold on to water and have constant access to any kind of fertilizer the way that Dendrobium tetragonum has. But I have to spray her several times a day when she's in active growth. So basically what I do in this case for fine roots on a mount is 160 parts per million, and I do that twice a day before it gets really, really hot. So maybe at eight o'clock in the morning, she gets her first 160 parts per million, and then again around 11 o'clock in the morning, another 160 parts per million, which will then give her an increase of parts per million of 320. That is very close to the amount that I apply to my large fleshy cattleyas that we just saw. But then I have to really flush and fast. So I'm just banking on the fact that in the time period of 8 to 11.30, 12 o'clock, she will have been able to absorb the maximum of 320 parts per million of fertilizer to sustain the super fast growth habit of this orchid. But then I have to flush because if the wind picks up and it gets hot, again, the water will evaporate and I am left with a very, very crusty mount. And that's not good for the roots which would take the orchid down. But look, these structures have to be maintained. I can't do 300 parts per million in one go. 
that's way too much, way too much fertilizer for these fine roots to absorb. So in the example of the afilum, I break it down into two parts, never more than 160 parts per million, but twice a day when in active growth, and then zero when she stops growing. Once she starts pushing her nubbins out again, it's 160 parts per million straight away again. So this orchid would be an example of fine roots with zero to 160, not zero to 320, because I don't make different batches for everybody. There's a batch that happens for a reason, and 160 and 300 are the two batches that I can make, no problem, and I don't have to think twice about it. So fine roots, zero to 160, fast grower, no reservoir being on a mount, gets double the application to support that rapid growth. And then again, zero when in rest. So by contrast, if we were just looking at fine roots on a mount, by contrast, what do we do with the big fleshy roots on a mount? I consider this a mount, it's just bare root, but it is sort of with a coconut husk pole. But let's just take the contrast of fleshy roots on a mount. I do not go to 300 parts per million. I do not use that bucket of fertilized water for these roots either. The reason being, again, too quick evaporation, too much fertilizer in the water. The water will evaporate faster than the nutrients can be picked up and then suddenly I've got salts burning my roots. So 160 parts per million, fleshy, fleshy roots on a mount. And I do that a lot, a lot, a lot during the day. So she can get up to 320. She can also get 480. It doesn't matter on this orchid that much. I just have to get the timing right. So just because I now have big fleshy roots hanging in the air, I am not applying the 300 parts per million that I would big fleshy roots in a pot. They are safe in a pot because there's a lot of moisture around them. They are not safe with 300 parts per million in one go because there's far too much air and evaporation going on around them. So that same principle applies, the exception being big fleshy roots, 160 parts per million, to make sure that the evaporation doesn't go faster than the absorption of the nutrients. So here's an example of 160 parts per million to 300 parts per million using Phalaenopsis complex hybrids. They do grow all year round, except in the winter the temperatures drop, making them slow down. They are massive orchids, big fleshy roots, their structures are enormous. So even despite the fact that they slow down in the winter, it doesn't mean that they are not going to need some kind of fertilizer because they're also pushing spikes. So during the winter, I give them 160 parts per million so that they can develop their spike. They have completed with their leaf growth. It's about supporting and sustaining the growth of the spike so that they don't absorb any of the bottom leaves in order to get the energy to produce their spike. So winter, in my case, the big complex hybrid fowls get 160 parts per million throughout the winter as the temperatures warm up. Then I start increasing to 300 parts per million. Big fleshy roots in the pot, big structures, same principle applies. 300 parts per million, they need to get their grow on so that we can get another spike node for the following year. So this is an example of continuous growth with big fleshy roots regardless of the fact that they slow down in the winter, 160 parts per million to 300 parts per million, and those two fluctuate based on the time of year. By contrast, let's use this superstar here, <laughs> my lovely Dendrobium hibiki. By contrast, we have very thin, very fine roots in a pot, but it is an all year round grower, just like the complex fowls would be. Same kind of climate in the winter, my temperatures drop in the dining room, that's where this one lives, but it grows all year round. There is no fertilizer rest needed in this orchid ever at all. But because of the size of the orchid, and while it is producing new growths in the winter, they might turn out to be a little bit smaller and stunted, like these little guys. These are my winter growths, these are summer growths, much bigger, but they get 160 parts per million throughout the winter because the orchid is constantly doing something. Growing new growth, blooming, growing roots. Growing new growth, blooming, and so on and so forth. There is no rest ever. This orchid has never had zero parts per million for an extended period of time. So in the winter, even though there's fine roots in that pot, but because of its constant activity, same with the Phalaenopsis that we just saw, 
160 parts per million goes into that pot because of the size of the orchid. If the orchid was only dealing with half its mass, I would probably take that down to 100 parts per million because it won't take up so much fertilizer during the colder months of the year. The size of the orchid is also a determination factor. So in this case, again, 160 parts per million during the winter. And then I do pop it up to 300 parts per million the minute I see bloom nubbins growing. The minute I see nodes swell up, the outdoor temperatures by that time have reached a steady warm 15 degrees Celsius at night. And the 300 parts per million is there to push the blooms so that nothing gets absorbed. No energy goes from the canes into producing the blooms. The canes stay nice and plump, even though I have fine roots in the pot. But this is a classic example of an orchid that never rests and that is always doing something. It is just the temperature and the metabolism that determines how much parts per million it gets. Lower temperatures, slower growth habit, 160 parts per million, and then full on 300 parts per million, despite having fine roots, but because of its constant activity, and I do not want the canes to suffer for blooms. The way I feel right now, I have done a lot of throwing around with numbers. I hope that this has made sense. There is a comment section below for a reason, and I would very much encourage you to use that at any given point in time for any questions, even additional opinions and suggestions for anyone who in future watches this video and not just Maria's cute pets. But I do hope, Maria, that this video somewhat gives you a good idea as to the logic behind how I apply my parts per million, depending on the size of the roots, depending on how fast it's growing, depending on temperature as well, and depending on, is it doing anything at all? Let me know in the comments below. I'd be very, very happy to see all the other opinions that are out there. Just finishing off with a massive thank you to Maria's Cute Pets for your question. Really appreciate it. Hope that this was helpful. Thank you ever so much for watching and have yourself a wonderful day. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.